this is something normally I wouldn't buy. I know just card Rob buys them. They got them. Um, they're great for knife carvers and whittlers. They got lots of patterns and give you uh, lots of different ideas, but I've never bought them. But I had to buy this one because about two weeks ago, somebody left me a comment on one of my videos saying, Hey, Jordy, you got a shout out in the Wood Carving Illustrated magazine. I did, question myself. So I went to the store to see if they had the magazine and they didn't have it. So somebody sent me a picture and yes, indeed, I did get a shout out inside this magazine, not from the magazine itself, from a fellow wood carver. And what an honor. What a freaking honor. So I'm going to put the camera on the overhead and I'm going to show you guys the quick shout out that I uh, got. Okay, so let's just scroll through this um, magazine, show you guys all different sorts of knives and stuff like that. Knives, um, I just got a new set. We'll talk about more about that later, but I have a just carved Rob knife. Um, they can be tricky to buy. There's so many different types, and all the good ones seem like, well, the, the best quality, like, handmade knives are all sold out. So, let's just keep on flipping through these. Gives you an idea. I've done something like that, like, with a flat board with an owl and trees and stuff. Um, let's find a pattern here. So, like, there's, like, a, a, a bird pattern you can do. So, these magazines, I think I am actually going to subscribe to them. Because I'm going to be doing some knife carving. Here's a bear pattern I wouldn't mind trying. It shows you how to do, you know, to do little bears. If I want to start carving more bears. Maybe it's better to start off with Dremel. Learn with Dremel than... So here we go. Here's the shout out. Wood Spirit Birdhouse. Look at that. So right off the bat, I want to say I'm not the originator of these Spirit Birdhouses. I don't... There was a, lots of them done. Just Carve Rob was even making them before um, I made the video for them so the fellow's name is chris hill wood spirit birdhouse what page is it on it's on page 45 and what an honor this quirky birdhouse project was inspired by a fellow named jordy johnson it's great item it's a great item to make yourself for even even better or give you a gift for someone special yeah these birdhouses they're great sellers and they're also great gifts. I haven't made an A-frame birdhouse like this. Like with, well, I've made the A-frame roof, but I haven't made them with the flat bottom. And I don't think I've ever put a pipe in my birdhouse um, either. I think the birds go inside his nose. Like he he doesn't he carves up on an angle in the nose. Let's let's let you look. Let's let, let you look here. But Chris Hill, um, this video is dedicated to you, and um, it's such an honor you said my name because. I guess you've seen my video on YouTube. Lots of, I'm always, I always give credit when credit's due. Okay, I don't expect people to do it for me all the time on my group, on the group on Facebook, Facebook World of Carvers. Like if they carve a wood spirit, they don't have to tag me because I'll just be getting tags all the time. But lots of people don't give credit when credit's due. And I don't expect this. This is one thing I don't expect, but I think it's a nice thing to do. You know, if you get an idea from somebody, give them give them a shout out and say, hey, I got this. You know, it's you don't have to. It's just nice to give somebody some credit once in a while. So thank you so much, Chris. And this video is dedicated to you. So you can see here he's gone over all the steps. Okay, so that's how he carves his uh, birds to get in. So it's good for predators too. I don't know if he, yeah, you can see there, he's, he gives you all the instructions. And he's even got a back door in it. He kind of does my roofs how I first did my roofs. Look at this, he's, oh, he cuts his uh, little pipe with a saw. Um, Chris did reach out to me, actually. And I spoke to him, and that's going to, that's, he, I see he uses that red wheel for the uh, buffing, which is pretty good. It's like a little nylon wheel. I use this in my die grinder, but I never thought about using it in my Fordham. Those, uh, you get like uh, those wheels on Amazon. Three sets, the sets of three, like you get the orange, uh, I think it's gray and blue. And you can hear him, see him putting on um, these, screw, these screws. Um, I got to give big credit to, to, to Peter Blair, because he's the one that, when I first started carving the bird house, he, houses, he would build them for me. So, because I'm not much of a builder. So, here's a pattern, too. So, if you want to pick up this magazine, you can, this month, 
It's a spring edition. It's the newest one. You'll see all his patterns and stuff like that. But so, Chris Hill, thank you so much once again. And uh, what an honor. So I'll put this one away with some of my other relics. And uh, it can die with me. So what do we got here? We're going to do a face of a spirit bird house today with a Dremel. This is what we got. This is very beginner. I'm going to leave it very simple. Okay. So these will be our roofs. This is a wall hanger. Okay. So what I did, you can see that white stuff there. That's super glue. I, I cut out a little piece of the same. This is a fence board. Just go to your hardware store, get yourself a six or an eight inch fence board, cut it with a friggin' hand saw if you don't have a saw. I used a jigsaw. You can see nothing square here. Like, I'll show you this side. There's gaps in there. I used a jigsaw, okay? So just cut it all out with a jigsaw, and this will be his beard down here. I glued the nose on. You can use friggin' wood glue. You can use epoxy. You can use soup, that CA glue. Use whatever glue you want, okay? This makes it a lot easier to get depth into your piece. You don't have to carve that much. Yes, I glued this nose on crooked. We'll try and fix that later. If this thing has a crooked nose, it has a crooked nose, okay? So what we're going to do... Because we're going to pull, we're going to, actually, we might as well just keep rolling live here. Once again, be very beginner Dremel curving. If you have a jigsaw, a handsaw, you have an old fence board lying around, you can do this, right? This is just going to be a wall hanger to look like a birdhouse. But, you know, if you want to build a birdhouse, buy the magazine and Chris, Chris has all the dimensions in there. Okay, so his nose is, the bridge of his nose is here. So we'll just like I said this is not going to be a very fancy wood spirit we'll try and carve them real wise maybe I'll pull out the new um, knives I got and the new chisels I got some flex cut okay so there's his eyebrows so his eyebrows will be up here right and then there's his mustache you can make it come straight down like this if you want and I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what any other wood carvers say. This is how I do it. And this is how I explain how I do it. And I'm not referring to anybody when I say that. Okay, so there's his mustache. We're going to go with the wide one here. And, you know, we'll carve, we, you can use like a, a spade bit to carve out the hole if you want to carve that first. You can use a, a forester bit or you can carve it out. And I'm just going to carve it out. Okay, so that will be the inside. All right, there we go. We're set. And like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just it's just about having fun, right? Just have fun when you're doing this, and you're gonna you can, if you can if you can carve this if you follow these steps that I'm gonna show you, you can make some great gifts. Like I said, I'm not gonna build the box for behind it. I've made lots of different types of bird houses, like that have flowers on them and have themes that have flat roofs, have sloped roofs. So this roof's gonna go like that, and then we'll carve these shingles on here or whatever we're going to do later and this is western red cedar but if you guys have pine or whatever you have at your local hardware store they're like six bucks a board you can make probably four of these five of these out of this out of this board right so anyways let's get the uh, dremel set up i'll show you guys what i'm going to use right now i'm going to be using my this is my favorite burr right here this is the cuts all extreme flame burr it's the one eighth that fits in the dremel my go-to burr right here. You guys want to get these burrs. They're way better than any Dremel burrs. Um, go to the link below. It'll take you to the Cuts All site and use code CFUSION to save yourself 5%. So I'm using a Dremel 4000, okay, with a Dremel flex shaft with this 1 8 Cuts All flame burr. We'll start out with this one, and we'll see how, we see how it goes. But I want to leave this as basic as possible. So eyebrows, mustache, beard. And an open mouth for the birds to get in. Okay, so what we're going to do first to make it, I'm going to, like I said, very simple. Anybody can do this. Trust me. Let's get this pen lid off here. I'm going to take down the, the bridge of the nose, okay? All this wood here, I'm going to carve it so your nose is sloped in. Don't worry about scale for human faces or giving them different characters or different things. It's very basic. It's going to look like a wood spirit when we're done. 
And for all you don't know, when I'm doing the Dremel carving, this is a dust collector table. I got a dust collector in a closet. I got other things. And most of the dust is going to get sucked down these holes into my dust collector. So this is the noise that you'll hear. I'll turn it on right now. Okay, so all the dust, lots of the dust will get sucked down here. Not all of it. So let's start taking down the bridge of this nose. Oops. I run a foot pedal with my Dremel. It does it, it's not speed control, it's just on and off. But when you buy the cheap knockoff Dremels, it does, you can get a speed control foot pedal. I think Dremel's got a, a block inside there, tools or something, so the speed control foot pedal won't work. Also, I'd like to say when you glue your nose on, make sure you um, you got a wood clamp to hold it on there, tight, nice and tight, because that way you won't see a gap when you um, when the the glue's drawing. I use the crazy glue, the CA glue with the accelerator, so I hope this is down tight, so you don't see like a line there. But anyways, the tighter you have that nose when the wood's um, when the glue's drawing, the better it's gonna look. So you don't have, also you don't have to glue your nose on, you can just carve the nose right in this piece, right? Just draw your nose on and carve it like I'm carving it. This just gives it some extra depth. Kind of shape, we'll shape the nose a bit. Just having fun. Okay, so now let's carve on the bottom side of our eyebrows. Okay, now we'll remove this wood below the eyebrows. Okay, so I can see this eyebrow is a little bit higher than this one. It doesn't matter, but let's try and fix it while we can. Sorry, I got to look at it off camera. Still a little bit higher. So the better that you draw them on, the more equal they're going to be. And you got to remember, this is... Uh, probably three quarters inch thick so we don't have much depth. Now you can see here I have there's a line there. Hopefully we'll be able to blend that out because I don't know if it was the best idea about me using the CA glue. Anyways now what we're gonna do where's my pen? We're gonna go like this up higher from the bottom of the nostril and you can glue your nose on you can put your face on wherever you want right i think if you do like the one that chris did with the flat bottom i think that might be um i don't know if it can be simpler to build or 
I like I like it because that flat bottom you can put it on a on a fence or you can put it wherever you want to put it, right? So you can just set it somewhere. It doesn't have to hang or go on a wall or in a tree. Okay, so see how I got the mustache drawn up a bit higher than the nostrils? Because then I can blend this mustard and the this mustache under the nostril later. So let's carve in this mustache. Okay, I got one side. Let's go to the other side. Okay, so our mustache is cut in. Now let's remove the wood on the outside of the mustache. Now let's do the other side. <sighs> Remove a bit of the wood beside the nose. Okay, so there we go. There's our nose sticking off. There's our mustache. Now let's carve inside of the mustache. Remove the, remove the wood inside to make this mustache elevate. See, look how look how easy this is going. So we might as well carve our bird, um, our bird. You know, it's good to find out what size of birds are uh, native to your land, so that that way you can make the hole the right size, so foreign birds can't get in there. But let's just kind of do. This is an inside or outside wall hanger. It's not an actual birdhouse. So let's just kind of do what we want. It doesn't matter about the size. But like I said, you might want to do some research to your land. Now we're going to carve this hole out. And again, everybody, not again, but on this video, I'm going to say, don't, you don't have to carve as fast as me. Just carve, be nice and gentle, and just enjoy it, right? Okay, so let's give him a bottom lip. You know, there I carved my my bottom lip in so thin it was breaking off, so I just carved deeper. Okay, here you can see everything's basically going on point. No sticks for this off. Um, eyes are carved in, not too deep. Um, our mustache is carved in. We've got our bird hole in. So now let's just quickly carve the beard hairs in. So, you know, your face would probably be here. So you can just do this. Just 
You know, when you're doing your beard hairs or your mustache hairs, you don't want nothing to be straight. You just want it all to have a nice, nice curves and kind of go with the flow. This is not going to be a crazy technical beard hairs. Just simple. Right, so we're going to carve on these lines and we're going to cross over these lines. We're going to keep using this. See what I mean? How much work this bird does so quick. It's got the little spikes on there. We'll use this one to quickly block it out then we'll use another cut saw burr that's not quite as aggressive aggressive i think it's the gold one see the differences come on zoom in so anyways let's see if we can get some better lighting here see left is aggressive right's way finer it's like a sandpaper they could probably i'd say 60 grit so let's just uh, keep carving these beard hairs in Sorry, another thing I forgot to do was carve the eyebrows in too. So what I'm going to do, we'll do that first. We'll just um, get our pen. Don't be afraid to draw things on your carving because you can always get rid of it, you know. So here's our eyebrows kind of like this. So we'll carve on this side of the line, this side of the line, and remove, remove the wood back, some of the wood back here. Okay. Now, when we move this wood, we want to take it like a slow uphill. We just don't want to do this. Because if you just do that one cut, you're going to see a, a bump there, right? Just slowly remove this wood gradually so it's like a slow uphill. And another thing I want to say too, is just because I'm running at full speed doesn't mean I'm carving. I always run at full speed with my Dremel, I just go lighter to the touch. And when you first start using these burrs, sometimes it will chaffer, it will get stuck. At, like say if you carve this channel too deep inside there, I can't give you an example because this isn't thick enough. But if you carve too deep in here, this burr will catch on both sides of this, this wall, pretend this is a wall and this is a wall. It will catch and it will chaffer and it will leave a big um big cut mark there. So just you know carve your thing. If you say if you want to carve this deep, carve a line in there, remove the wood, then carve a line, then remove the wood. Just take your time. Okay, there you go. There's your eyebrows. See how I did a slow, slow uphill there? No big cut mark. So now let's start cutting these. Um, we're not going to give this guy, well we can. Let's just um, go like this straight down on these lines here. I like to do one side at a time so you can keep, try and keep them equal. Alright, now let's remove some of these wood. So this is just going to kind of elevate our cheekbones for us, that cut. Or the side of the face. Okay, other side. Okay, so let's just kind of... Alright, so he's kind of got cheekbones in there, not really, but who cares? 
don't worry about that at this point. So, you know, since this is a wall hanger, so if this was a birdhouse and you'd have a box back here, I would leave this part square right now, but there's no sense leaving this square because you want it to look nice and round and just don't have a square edge when you carve your beard hairs. So let's take some of this edge away for a few seconds here. That will just help when you're putting your beard hairs in to round them off so it doesn't look so square. I got, I got a sneeze. No, I don't. Okay, so beard hair time. Now let's just start cutting them in. Remember, this is still just the rough out, right? Okay, beard hairs. So you think they'd probably come off the face like this? Alright, so... We'll just leave it, keep it simple. Make sure you slope them down so they blend in with these ones, like down, 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 so they blend in when, when you hit down here. If you want, this is just my opinion. Just kind of giving them a little facial structure there, a cut, and then I'll go ahead and round it off. Just kind of blend your beard hairs in there. Okay, so let's take some more off these edges of the face. Kinda run around. All right, so let's press pause. Okay, so everything's looking good at this point. Um, you know, I did. I should have made his nose wider. Who cares? Wood spirits—they don't—they're not real faces. They're friggin' wood spirits. They can be what whatever you want them to be. See that cheekbone on the right there? See there's no cheekbone on the left there? So now I gotta carve in a cheekbone on the left. And also, I'm gonna start um, just running around cleaning it up with this gold bird that I showed you guys earlier. Okay, so let's get that done. And then we'll talk about some details, some eyes and whatever whatever's next. Oh, we'll carve some nostrils and shape his nose with this burr. Okay, so now I'm gonna run around and clean up all these 
these fuzzies and stuff and the bad cuts, like rough cuts. You can see here where I cross the beard hairs and not just straight. You can do nice, smooth, straight lines, you know, or you can cross them. I just cross them. It's quicker. Okay, so let's give this guy... Okay, so I can get this all done off camera. You can also use a diamond burr or a flap sander. So then let's um, work on this nose. So here's my pen. So this is why I brought the mustache up higher because now we can go like this and put our nostrils on. So I look at the piece straight on, make sure the nostrils are the same height. If they're not the same height, it doesn't matter. It's a, once again, it's a wood spirit. It could be whatever you want it to be. Okay. So, and this mustache here, I'm going to carve deep right about here. So, I'll show you. I'm going to carve deep right about here just to give it some extra texture, some more movement in the face to get the mustache to pop off. Then you can take the mustache lower if you want, but I'm not going to in this video. Okay, so we'll go deep here. Nice and soft here. Boom. Okay, so now I'm going to remove some of this wood behind the nostril. I'll take the mustache down a bit. Flip it over. Kind of shape the nose how you want it. Let's give him a bumpy nose. I'm just going to take some of the wood away here. So now, let's give him his nostrils. All I do is just go up and under. But don't go too close to this edge of your nostril. Because you can have a blow, then you'll get a huge shape of a nostril. It doesn't matter again though, it's a wood spirit. Okay, give him a little bit of a flare. Now we can kind of shape it a bit more. And there you go. There's a basic nose. Nostrils are cut in, kind of round the edges. All right, so let me clean this all up off camera. I'll clean this all up off camera and we'll talk about um, some eyes and some details. Okay, so I might also suggest like Chris did, he carved the face with thicker wood. 
This is just, like I said, a fence board, but he used, I think he used like a two by six. So thicker, so he was able to carve his nose in. If you guys do want to carve your own noses in, for the beginners, maybe start off with a thicker piece of wood because then you can get more depth in there. So that's how this looks now so far. So the eyes, let's talk about the eyes. So this is something pretty special that I want to share with you guys. Mr. Chris Hill, I don't know if I said um, in, already in this video, I forget things, everybody, sorry, that um, I, I mentioned that he gave me a shout out in the magazine, one of my videos, he's seen it, and then he contacted me via email. Well, Chris got paid money to have this article in the magazine. The magazine paid him the money, and you guys aren't going to believe what I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to say the amount, but Chris gave me the money chipped in me the money for the giveaway that the magazine paid him. Can you guys believe that? I'll say it's over $200 and under $300. So what I've did as soon as Chris sent me that money for the giveaway, I want him to know that he bought me a tool that you'll be seeing on future videos. And every time I'm using that tool or tools, Chris will know that he bought them for me. So this is the first. It's a flex cut starter set with three knives. I ordered this on Amazon. It's in my Amazon store, I believe. No, it's not in there yet. This. And I might have paid a couple dollars my own money, but it's okay. And then I bought this. Brand new off Amazon. So Chris... Thank you for buying these for me. So every time I use these in my future, because I can't always create a, a crazy amount of dust. I can't. I got no experience with knives. Okay, this is a just carved rob knife that he made me. Super wicked knife. I love it. But it needs to be stropped. It needs to be sharpened. I did, Peter Blair gave me some of this um, sugar pine. I kind of carved a wood spirit face. I finished this with the Dremel, but I blocked it out a bit with uh, with the knife. I got some basswood here, some basswood blocks I'm going to start. I'll probably do a lot of it off video. Kevin there at Sticks and Stones um, has been making lots of knife and chisel carving videos. And Kevin Kevin and Just Carve Rob said, because I've been, I was spent hours and hours and hours online and eBay looking at knives and chisels. And they both suggested the Flex Cut. They're proven good quality tools and you can get them they're not hard to get okay you go on ebay you go on amazon you go to their site and you can always get them i went to my local uh, tool shop here and they had a whole wall full of flex cut knives and stuff like that so this is what i'm suggesting for the very beginners it's a proven tool it's quality they come sharp out of the box and I, I I don't know too much about them, but I'm just going to start slowly using them and incorporating them in my videos because, because I think the knives and the chisels are the best. Way. I think the knife carvers carve the best eyes. Okay, I don't have that much depth here. They're not going to be super round, right? I'm going to. I'm going to use the knives to try and carve some eyes here. It's not going to be a tutorial. I'm just going to show you guys how they come out. I, I've already tried carving eyes. I forget which one it was, but a wood spirit with the, I start off with the knives and then I'll go back to my Dremel and then I'm going to use probably this exact burr here, right here. It's a three point cutter. Okay. Because if I can't get enough depth in those eyes with this knife, and like I said, I don't have that much depth in here. I have maybe like, I maybe have like, I don't know, maybe like not even half an inch and I don't want to cut through it. But if you do cut through them, it doesn't matter. So Chris, again, I can't thank you enough, man. Like over the top, buddy. And you guys, I got, I got something more to share um, with you later in this video about what Chris did. Like, you know, as such a generous person, I try to be as generous as I can. And um, Chris is just kind of over the top and the world needs more people like you, Chris. So I'm going to pull out these knives here, uh, put my carving glove on and kind of show you guys. This is not a tutorial how to carve eyes with a knife. Let me be clear on that. If this is a long video, don't care. Doesn't matter. 
Okay, for all the haters, like I said, this is not a tutorial. This is just how I'm going to try and do eyes today. And you can see that glue line to put that nose. You can see it a little bit there, but it's no big deal because we're going to burn this a little bit, give it some textures, and then we're going to give it a clear coat. And hopefully that clear, clear coat, let's see, let's do a spit test. Carbon fusion spit test. Okay, well, you see that line a little bit. No big deal, though. It looks like wood grain, doesn't it? So I started off with one um, dots here. Try and make your your eye ducks, whatever they're called, center. So I've been watching this. Um, um, it's an old school knife chisel carver that does amazing wood spirits and Indians on YouTube. I forget the, I forget his name, but I've been I watch it every night. And he said most people that do eyes, and this is what he says, and don't hold me to it. Most people that do eyes, you know, they make their eyes too big. And he said the top eyelid should be more rounder. And this isn't how he said it. And then the bottom, more flatter. Maybe a little bit of roundness there. See, that's even pretty big eyes here for me. So more of a round slope on the top and less on the bottom. Because people that do this, then they got huge eyes. So let me erase that before I cut it in like that. So then I'm going to turn this. And he had a tool, like a little tool, like, um, let's see here, was, you know, where he could measure, like, say this was one piece of metal connected, and he'd go like this, and like this, and like this, this, to make sure the eyes are the same thing. So, you know, there's so much knowledge on YouTube for wood carving, or anything, right? That's what YouTube's for. It's, it's a library. So I'm sure I'm not going to get these very equal. So, let me see. I got to look at it off. This one needs to be. So, I think the better that you draw them on first, the better they're going to turn out. And you, this just shows you, I really don't care. Like, I'm showing you guys basically first time carving knives, eyes with knives. Now, I don't know. You guys can leave all the comments. Oh, you do this, this, this. I don't care what you say. Yes, I read the comments. I'll like it. I'll give it a heart. Even if you want to be a hater. So these knives here, these flex cut, they're all they're all straight. Let's see here. They're all straight blades. Okay. This just carved rob one has is turned here. I sent just carved rob some you wood, so hopefully he can make me a uh I guess it would be like a block out knife, like a straight blade one with a piece of yew wood. But uh, Just Carve Rob's been dealing with some terrible back problems, so I hope you're uh, going to feel better, Just Carve Rob, and just take rest, buddy. Lie on the floor for a couple days. You know, get the shop inspector, cuddle up, put on a fire, and uh, watch some YouTube videos, because I know you ain't going to be making them. Got to feel better, buddy. So these knives here, let me get my carving glove on. I think I'm going to, I can feel Rob's knife. I can feel a little burr on the edge. It should be stropped right now, but I don't have a strop here. Because what I want to do with this, well, I got my chisels, but I want to go like on camera. So if you guys can see this, I want to go like this and punch in a straight line here like that. And then I can slowly chip it away. And like I said, I'll probably end up pulling out my um, Dremel with that um, Chinese burr. But let me get my carving glove on. And I suggest everybody gets um, carving gloves that are new to knife carving. This is a cut-proof glove. I got these ones. They're, I ordered a size smaller. So my normally my gloves are, um, like if I'm working, I hate wearing gloves. I don't wear them when I'm working or anything. But normally they're large, but I ordered these medium, so they're a tighter fit, so you can see if you're doing something like this. You know, it's not a big, one of those big baggy gloves. You know, what's the name of these Lincolns? Lincolns? I think they're like kind of for welding stuff. But this one, these ones have the rubber here too, so your piece is grippier. So you can... All right, so let's see if we can... I know I could probably get a chisel, one of my gouges, and 
and go like this and tap it and get a nice round shape there. That's why I got this big set because it's got so many different um, things and things round, bigger rounders, pieces, smaller round ones and stuff like that. But um, so as the years go by, I'll get more experience with these tools. But very, very, very beginner. So let's see if I can just kind of, and you know, especially with this knife carving, and when you're doing eyes, you got your lights, have lights in all different directions because you see shadows. Like, look, well, there's, see that shadow? I hate shadows. So all I'm going to do is just kind of go around like this. And you guys can say whatever you want to say. I really don't care. All right, so then this line. See, that's why I wanted to use this one, because I can kind of rock it in there. This will be the rocking rocking start cut. Let's call it that, okay? See, I'm rocking it. Yep, the rocking start cut. So there's that one. See, then later we'll just kind of... Chip it out. Yep, this is a little chip cut here. Huh? Just carve her up. A little wedge chip cut. Anyways, let's do the other side. Oh, all you knife carvers are probably hating me right now. Don't care. <laughs> Don't care. Hi, Liz. You know, this is a new tool. You know, for all you that are just starting Dremel carving, you're you're using a new tool. Learn the tool. Once you once you know the tool better, then your carvings are going to get better. Right? Does that make sense? So, I don't want to break this tip on this knife, but this is just carved. Rob did a fantastic job uh, making this knife with the solid steel because. You know, I'm hard on shit. There's, there's no denying it. Okay. So we got that. So let's just kind of do little chip cuts in there, you know. Just kind of chip her in, chip her out. Where's one of these straight knives? Now maybe we can do a, like a little, we'll do a cross chip cut like this. Just kind of cross it in there. And uh, I think I'm probably better, um, fuck it, I'm better pulling out my Dremel. <laughs> All right, three, two, one, ignite the fan. Oh, got to turn the Dremel up. This bit's dull. These bits get dull super quick, so I'm going to swap out the bit. I got some new ones here. Okay, well, I just had my new ones, but I can't find them, so I got another probably dull one here. Let's see if this one works. Okay. All right, so we got our marks in there. So now I'm going to remove the wood around these eyes. I'm going to remove it to make the eyes elevated. And I'm going to have to hook up another bit. That's the other thing too, you guys. If you feel like you need to change bits, just stop, take your time, and change the bit. Okay, so since they're all new, uh, brand new Dremel carvers here, how I put my bits in, I don't leave it out like that, and I, I don't tighten it up like that, because this Dremel spins at 35,000 RPMs, and these things aren't rated for that. So I loosen it up, I push it in, I pull it out just a little bit, okay? Tighten it up. Why I, why I pull it out just, see, let's do it again. I don't care. Loosen it up. Push it in all the way, pull it out just a little bit. 
Why I do, and then I tighten up. Why I do that? Because sometimes these burrs get stuck inside your collet inside here. And if you leave it out just a little bit, if that burr is stuck inside that collet, you know, you can't pull it out, you loosen this, you take it off, it doesn't come out. If it's stuck there like that, all you have to do is go like this, tap it on your table, burr pushes in, then it can pull out, right? So if you leave them out like this, you're going to bend them, you're going to warp them, or just even break them. So always get your burrs nice tucked in there close and it's closer to your hand it closer to your hand means you got more accuracy right so now I'm gonna do is remove all this wood around the eye this is another cut saw taper burr I believe it's uh, probably the gold one too So I'm basically just carving down where I see that I can see a cut line from my original cut. And I'm gonna remove that cut line. Okay, the top too. Periodically, you'll see me if that even that's a if that's a word. You'll see me run around like I'll be working on this, and you'll see me go like that quickly. Because when I'm carving this, I'm looking at my whole piece wide, and I see something that needs to be corrected, and I correct it when I see it. Because I might forget about it later on. It's kind of like I always kind of wondered why tattoo artists did that. You know, they'll be filling in your ink here, but then they'll jump over here quickly, then go back because they see a spot that wasn't filled in good enough. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the back there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round these eyes off. Just kind of make them look like round footballs. Sometimes I'll even get my Dremel piece and go like this to get into spots, right?
Okay, so like here I'm having a problem getting that square edge, so screw it. Put in a different burr, right? Like let's find, um, let me find another burr to show you guys maybe. Okay, so I got this, um, I got this diamond burr. Let's get a cheap sets on Amazon. See, it's got a flat bottom. So I think this might work to try and make it rounder. And the fellow that um, I've been watching on YouTube, he, um, somebody, it's not his YouTube channel, but somebody's been posting his older videos. It's like, a, it's like a class you would have to pay for back in the day. He says the eye, the eyeball kind of hangs in the socket. So it's, there's always some more slope back and there's, it's more rounder towards the bottom, if that makes sense to you. So there's always, like where the top eyelid is there, it's always more slope back and more, it's hard to explain, but it's more rounder near the bottom, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. I'm just going to remove some more of the wood behind the eye. Okay. You know what? I just thought of something. Sorry, I'm, I don't don't really pay attention to the way I'm doing eyes because I should have just drew big. I, I jumped ahead on my on the steps. I should have just drew my eyes on like round, like footballs in here, and then you do your eyelids. Like so, these are the pupils. Then your eyelids. This one's always higher, right? And then this one's more flatter. That's when you have your 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 eyes kind of uh, carved in there. So once again, this one's always higher, more rounder. And then the bottom is always more a bit more straighter. So that's um, my fault. And sorry about that. So where's the just carved rob knife? Let's um, do the same thing that we did. So that I jumped, Alexa. Be quiet. Sorry about that, everybody. Now let's just kind of, um, we're losing, we don't have much depth here. This is just kind of like a tracer line for me. These eyes aren't going to look that round. The more depth you have, <clears throat> excuse me, the better. Yeah, I totally jumped the gun on that. See, I'm not good enough yet to let the knife slide inside the wood because, well, it, it will slip and cut me, right? So, let's see here. Let's see if I can do it. No, it's, it's safer for me just to let it rock in the wood. Okay. So now I'm going to pull out my Chinese cutter again. And then I'll try and make these, like I said, there's not much depth here. These are kind of just like guidance lines for me. Now I'll pull out that Chinese cutter again. Now I'll kind of, well, I could do it with this knife, but I don't want, where's a little detail knife here? I think this might be a detail knife. I know they do uh, chip cuts in the eyes. Like they go like this, like this, then like this, like three cuts. So kind of one two and then three yeah oh fuck it Dremel time 
Okay, so here's the Chinese cutter. You gotta be so gentle with this. Corners. Like I said, this eye's not gonna this eye's not gonna be that round because I don't have much depth. See how I'm cutting deep into the corners? There's always that one spot that's hard to get to. It's what different burrs are for. Okay, so now some eyelids. And bottom eyelids. Yeah, you want your bottom eyelid in the corner here to tuck underneath your top eyelid. Some simple age lines, whatever. Eyelids. Your bottom eyelid. Some tear ducts or whatever they're called. The deeper that you carve the corner of your eyes, what's going on here? The better it's going to look. So this eye is way, what, what did I do here? Oh, okay. I like to come down here too. Separate your eyebrows. Separate the bottom lip from the mustache. Okay, so now I'm going to find another diamond burr to kind of smooth out these eyes. Okay, I found this little one that's got a little edge on it. You see the edge? Because that way you can get underneath the eyelids. So let's see how well this works.
just got to really take your time. I don't know. Good enough for the chick's eye. Beep. So this cedar's pretty chippy, so I did the best I could. So now I got this. I think this might be an old Typhoon burr I have, like a Fordham makes. You see the round one? Now I'm just going to put, um, actually, you know what? Let's just kind of. This will be his pupil. I don't care because I can cut right through the wood because if this was actually a birdhouse, this could be like an air hole for them, right? So I'm just going to put this in here. So now I got this, um, this is my trusty old burnt out diamond burr. It's my burnt out diamond burr. And I'm just going to kind of uh, go along, carve some, um, let's see, I'm going to carve a line like this, like this, you know, like um, just to give your eyes a bit more character. So let's get this on here and I'll be back. So this will basically do the same thing as the Dremel 125 bit that um, burns the wood, but I just count. And you got the smaller ones, I think, and they might be the Dremel um, 125, then Dremel 119 or something. So I'm just going to carve some lines in here. Kind of just give it a light burning underneath the eyelid. Get some deep burning in these corners where I carve deeper. Okay, so you guys saw how I did that one. Kind of round these edges a bit. Okay, so the struggle was kind of real with the eyes. This ain't done yet. You can see I did some wood burning up there, gave them some age lines and stuff with that bit. Those eyes just kept on chipping away. But so now what I got is my uh, a little butane torch here. You can use a propane torch. I do not know if I have enough gas in this, so I'm going to definitely burn the parts that need to be burnt. I carved a bit deeper underneath this mustache in the bottom lip there where my thumb is on both sides. That looks good when you burn it and sand it. Um, usually if you can carve deeper right in here burn it and stuff like that in here we could paint that um paint black or brown inside the nostrils and um, burn deep in the circle so and just kind of give this a light burn to get rid of the fuzzies then we'll hit it with uh, emery cloth okay so one can only hope that we have enough gas in here and i don't think so Yep, she's running out.
I don't have any more butane. Do I got more butane here? Let me see. I don't think I do. No, I got no butane left, but I found this torch. Maybe this. Whoa. This will give it textures too. See if we could turn up. I should not be lazy and I should put something over these holes. So no uh, sparks get in there because that's where the dust is. Let's crank the sucker. You know, when you do your wood burning, do it outside in a ventilated area. I'm pretty good in here. I got fans and stuff like that. And don't, I would not wood burn it too much because you will burn away your detail. Especially with this soft wood like this cedar here. And you could make a real mess, trust me. I'm known for um, burn, burning too much. Making a mess. Just over these eyes, just give it a quick little... Just darken them up a little bit. Oh, we still got to carve our eyebrows in. Okay, so I'm going to go along the edge here. Thank, thank goodness there was uh, more butane in here. Kind of cheek lines there. Underneath the lip. <sighs> like I said, just kind of burn the fuzzies off. Okay, and up around here too. This will look nice when you put your roof on. Okay, I gotta carve those uh I gotta carve those eyebrows in. What I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna carve the eyebrows in is with um an aluminum cutter. I'm looking for it right now. I can't find the one I normally use. Oh there it is. So this right here. It's an aluminum cutter. I use it on edge and just mom, 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 and I'll burn them. Okay. And one sec. Okay. We'll turn the fan on and I just hold it on edge. And just, just let the bird do the work. See how chippy this wood is? You can bring them down below too. Okay. So I'll burn that lightly and then we'll sand it. Okay, so I burnt there. Normally I round the, the eyebrows to the head before I carve the eyebrows in, but I didn't do that this time. So I kind of just burnt this up here. So this is uh, emery cloth. It's in my Amazon store. You know, 
Yeah, emery cloth. No, not emery cloth. Scotch Brite stuff. You know, like use dishes. But if you, you get the better stuff at the automotive shops, um, I, it's on a Peter Blair sanding mandrel. Okay, you can see, I just cut it up into little squares and then I put it on here. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn my fan on and hit this. See how well this works. I don't. This soup, cedar's super soft. I don't want to sand away my details. Okay, so I painted inside of those pupils brown and up inside the nostrils brown too. That guy's a little bit googly eyes. And for the very beginning Dremel carvers, I want to, or wood carvers or whatever, when you're carving a wood spirit, I don't care if I was the best carver in the world, your wood spirits do not need to have eyes. If you try to carve eyes, yes, the more you carve, I haven't carved that many, the more you carve, the better you will get, for sure. Now we got these roof pieces, right? So they'll go on there like that. So now we're gonna, when I do these roofs, I make sure I had to carve some of this bevel off so it fits. Sorry, so it fits like that. Or you can do this or whatever you wanna do. Yeah, same thing. So now I get a pen and I mark which, one, which side is the front. Put a, put a mark there, put a mark here. There's the front. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just, let me get the camera in the overhead. makes more sense. So if you guys hear voices in the background, if the painters are here, um, we might as well just carve fake shingles in here. Let's carve it so it has, um, well, that's kind of a shitty piece. No, oh, no, we'll do this. We'll make it so there's like a soffit under there. Okay. So we got that front piece. Is that the right way? Yeah, I think so. And then I'm going to curve this soffit a bit deeper. And then these can be the shingles. So the shingles just boom, boom. This is your shingle rows. Normally I wouldn't draw them on, but you can, you can make them like this if you want. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your piece, your creation. Right, so let me get this. Um, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is on the inside of this line, I'm going to curve it deeper in here to make these shingles seem elevated from the, um, the soffit or your fascia board. Sorry, your fascia board. Okay, so I got the Cutsole Extreme Flame Brewer in here again. Turn the fan on. Oh, turn your Dremel up, Jordy. Second one. Remember I said this cedar is pretty soft? 
soft in wood carving for this kind of wood cedar means fragile so okay so we got like a I don't know you guys can't see but we kind of got a, a rounder uh, edge there so let's get a tool let's get a burr where we can make a square edge so I think this uh, aluminum cutter is good see how well that works Okay. This bit uh, works great for making stairs too. Okay, so which one's the top? Which one's the bottom? So that's the top. Right here. That's why I mark it, right? That's the top. So our, our shingles need to overlap at the bottom too. Careful of your hands. Okay, so we got our shingles overlapping in the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out another one of these aluminum, uh, one of these cheap Chinese burrs and start cutting in the rows. And we might as well just keep it running live now. We'll do an undercut underneath these shingles too. See, this burr doesn't work that good when you're trying to carve against grain. See that? Yeah, you just have to have a super soft touch when you use it. So it's more like a chisel than anything. And I know that this one is getting dull. Okay, so shingle layers. Where's the top again? Let's make sure we got that right. Yeah, okay. This one's getting pretty dull. Yeah, I'm going to have to hook up another burr. Okay, I'm going to get this taper burr again. And I'm going to go along. And I'm going to bevel all these shingles so they look like they're sticking above each other. The more time that you spend on stuff like this, the more... You should just be having a fun time the whole time, right? Once you get stressed out and, you know, when you're doing the eyes or something and things don't work out, just take a break. So where's the top? Yeah, that's the bottom, that's the top. Let's 
See that chipped away? That's what I'm talking about, fragile. Chipped away. And this is definitely not an aggressive burr. Okay, so I'll get this done when done, then I'm gonna pull a, a sharp aluminum cutter and then we'll do the friggin' shingle shingles. Okay, so I got all that done, so now I got the, this uh, cheap Chinese burr on here again. Now I'm just gonna cut in the shingles. Stagger them like bricks. Okay. Okay, so the roofs are all done, carved and sanded. Now I got this uh, cheap Amazon, uh, this wood burner from Amazon. I use this one all the time. I got the, one of the most expensive ones and um, I prefer to use this one over that one. So, and this one is in my Amazon store too. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit down, make sure you do this wood burning in a ventilated area. You don't want to be breathing in this smoke and um, this thing heating up yet. And we're just going to go along and it would burn underneath each layer. You know, maybe you can't afford a wood burner. I think this one's like 60 bucks or 50 bucks. Maybe you can't afford one, but when you can afford one, if you like wood carving, it's a real game changer for your wood carvings. So you can see here, I'm just burning each shingle in, each course in. You know, the more burning, I'm not really burning that much here, but the more burning that you do, the better it will look. Okay, make sure your shingles are wrapped around to the bottoms. Then we'll do a burn here too, to separate the fascia board from the shingles. So I think I'll get this wood burning done on both of these. You guys can see what's happening here. Get it done, and then I'll give this these shingles a light burn, just to kind of blend them in more with the face. Sand it with that um, scotch brake cloth again, the sanding mandrel, and then we'll get these um, shingles, these roofs on the um, house, just with some super glue or some epoxy or something. Ooh, stinky cedar. I'll be back. Oh, but first of all, I got to eat my donut. Yeah, it's jelly filled. Um, it's good donut. Okay, bye. Okay, so the roofs are all done, ready to go. But look what I did here. Let's see if you can see. So they go like this, but look at the shingles up there. They don't, they don't match up. So anyways, I'll have to figure that out. I go like this and put a little block in there. And I think that's what I'll do. Glue them on this way. I'm just going to get some... Uh, Oh, I also burnt under here too, so you can see here it's not burned. I gotta burn more of this. So I'll be back. I think I'm just gonna use that CA glue to tack it in. 
Okay, so this is the CA glue I was talking about. Here's the medium stuff. It's like super glue, and this is accelerator. So what I'm going to do is put the super glue on this part. And then I'm going to put the accelerator on this part. And go like this. Okay, so that's good. That one's done. Still not that solid yet. Then I'm going to do the same on this side. Ah, you son of a bitch. I put that one up too high. That's okay. It's a birdhouse. They don't have to be, you know, like, how can I say it? It's, it's going to be outside. Not this one. It's a wall hanger. You can be hung outside or whatever, but birdhouses, they're just going to get weathered and they look... A lot better when they're weathered. Come on. There we go. I'm going to flip this around. See how fast that dries? All right. So he even has the Carving Fusion Geordie Prison House tattoo signature on his cheekbone there um when i glued this roof on i didn't really glue it that flush and you can see how like maybe i should have thought more about the roof when i was doing it and there's the gap up there that's okay you just fix a problem how did i fix the problem i carved him a carving fusion thunderbird to put on the roof yep just like this i'm gonna sit up there just like that carving fusion thunderbird on the roof i'll glue it in So as I was emailing back and forth with Mr. Chris Hill here that curved this beard house in the magazine, Chris, I can't thank you enough, man. Like generosity is just, your generosity has gone way unheard of. So everybody, Chris also said he would really love to donate. He's got an Etsy shop. I'm going to find a link for it and I'm going to, actually I favorited it. And I'm going to leave a link below this video in the description. Because he sells these in his Etsy shop. And he, I don't know if he ships worldwide, but he's in UK. I believe he's in England. So he wants to donate one of these for the giveaway too. So somebody within the UK will win this. If, if, you're, if your name's drawn and you're not in the UK, we're going to have to figure it out to see if you want to pay the extra shipping. Or maybe I'll even pay the extra shipping to get it there. And Chris said he'd be happy to ship this anywhere in the UK. Can't thanks enough. Can't thank you enough, Chris. You know this isn't the best. I haven't carved a uh, flat plane carving like this in a long time. It's not the def. It's definitely not the best birdhouse I've ever made, but it's not the worst. He's kind of got a little bit of a googly eyes there, but he's got the the carving fusion Thunderbird eagle head up top. Sooner or later, I will be using these for videos once I learn them a bit better when I get some time. So let's pull this off here. And there's a message on the back of this. There's a Thunderbird Eagle Head carving fusion style. To Chris Hill, thank you so much. Jordy Johnson, 2023. Chris, you know what? It's like um, not the best one I said that I've ever carved, but I hope that you'll let me send this to you as a big, huge thank you. You know, like I said, it's not the best one I've ever carved, but it's one of my pieces and you know, just like your pieces and everybody else's pieces, it's special. So send me an email once you um, see this video, please. I'm going to send you an email saying that you need to watch the video. And um, super awesome, man. So much appreciated. You, you just don't know because um, my, I myself love to give back too. And that's what this channel is kind of about is giving back. So I'll talk to you soon, Chris, and we'll get this shipped off to you. If you want it, you don't have to. You might not. You may think yours is better than mine. You may think this is a piece of shit. Who knows? So anyways, everybody, look what we got here. The new Ram's in. Yep. Here's the quarter-inch handpiece. 
here's the one eighth hand piece and i got another hand piece that holds the 332 burrs uh maybe tomorrow i'll be able to film using this i want to use it a little bit before before i f say too much about it but i'll say right now that this thing these things friggin rip i'm not going to put the extreme burrs on here let's hold it up to the compared to the dremel so it's just a little bit bigger than the dremel flex shaft and I'm not going to be doing crazy carving with this quarter inch burr one. And I'm going to carve this big huge piece of cottonwood bark. I'll put my hand there so you guys can see the size of it. And I'm going to make a video carving this with that. But right now for myself, I got this piece of tree fungus or that I think artists do art on them. Uh, I found this on Vancouver Island on the beach. You guys might remember it from a video, but um, artists paint them or something. But this one's cracked. So I'm going to... Uh, Maybe carve some mushrooms in here or something. Figure something to do just for myself. Maybe I'll show a little clip of it at the end of this. I'll show a clip of it at the end of this video, but my phone's going to die here. So thank you, Chris, from the Carving, for me, Jordy Johnson at Carving Fusion, and for the Carving Fusion community, because I know somebody would love to win one of your. I'd love to win it. Later. Well, I hope the Mod Podge dries. Anyways, any of you ever uh, carve one of these? It's like friggin' carving foam, but carry on. We'll hit the big one tomorrow. <laughs> Next video.